Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last two lectures, we discussed various problems and questions that were connected with these problems that we will be addressing in this course. The basic fundamental question was about linear systems of equations. We shall begin our study of linear systems in a formal way. We shall use the notations as follows, recall the notations that we introduced in the last lecture. We will always be considering either matrices with real entries or matrices with complex entries. Most of the statements that we will say will be valid whether they are real entries or with complex entries. So, in general we will denote by f either the set of real numbers or the set of complex numbers. Whenever it is necessary to identify whether you are using real numbers or complex numbers, we will make this explicit on such occasions. Then by f k for any positive integer k, by f k we shall denote the set of all column vectors with n entry with k entries and all the entries are real numbers x1, x2, etc. are all real numbers or complex numbers and therefore we will use the symbol f. And theta k will denote the specific vector namely the 0 vector with k entries. Then for any two positive integers m and n by f m cross n, we shall denote the set of all matrices n cross n. So, 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to m, 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n said that all these entries are from f. In the real matrix case they are all from R, in the complex matrix case they are all from C. In particular we will use the symbol 0 m cross n to denote the m by n 0 matrix. That is the m by n matrix all of whose entries are 0. Then for the square matrix, we shall use the notation f n squared to denote the set of all matrices which are square that is 1 less than or equal to i comma j less than or equal to n and all the entries are from the f. Again f equal to r when you are talking about real square matrices and f equal to c when we are talking about complex square matrices. In particular, we shall denote by i n the n by n identity matrix that is the identity matrix with n rows and n columns. And by 0 n, we shall denote the n by n 0 matrix that is the n by n matrix all of whose entries are 0. These are the standard notations that uh, we shall be using as and when required we shall introduce the other rotation. With this the linear system problem can be written as follows. We are given an m by n matrix A. So, A is in F m cross n and then we want to find an x 
which is an f n such that a x equal to b for any given b in f m. So, here is the given matrix and for various b in f m we would like to find x such that a x is equal to b. This is the fundamental problem of linear systems of equations. In particular, when b is the 0 vector, when b is the 0 vector, we get the system a x equal to theta m and we call this the homogeneous system corresponding to the matrix A. So, this is called the homogeneous system from now on we will write short H s for homogeneous systems corresponding to the matrix A. when b is not theta m then the system a x equal to b is called a non homogeneous system it's called a non homogeneous system We shall see that in the analysis of the non homogeneous system, the homogeneous system plays a very important role. We shall look at some very simple properties of the homogeneous system. Simple properties of homogeneous system. So, we are looking at the matrix A and we are looking at the homogeneous system A x equal to theta m. The first thing we observe is that x equal to theta m is always a solution of the homogeneous system because a times theta n is certainly theta m because a is m by n theta is n by 1 and theta is the 0 vector. So, the resultant is the m by 1 0 vector. So, therefore, the homogeneous system always has a solution always has a solution x is equal to theta m. This solution is called the trivial solution. This is called the trivial solution. Let us look at one or two examples. Consider the matrix A 1 1 1 minus 1. So, here we have an m by n system m is 2 n is so, it is a square system and what is the homogeneous system corresponding to this? The equation becomes the first equation is x 1 plus x 2 equal to 0 and the second equation is x 1 minus x 2 equal to 0. And as observed earlier the 0 solution x 1 equal to 0 x 2 equal to 0 gives x is equal to theta 2 the trivial solution. And from the system, we easily see that this is the only solution for the homogeneous system. This is the only solution for the HS. 
So, here is an example of a homogeneous system where the only solution is the trivial solution. Let us now look at another example. Consider the matrix A equal to 1, 0, minus 1 and 0, 1, minus 1. What is the homogeneous system corresponding to this matrix? It is x 1 minus x 3 is 0 and x 2 minus x 3 is 0. Here again x 1 equal to 0, x 2 equal to 0, x 3 equal to 0 that is x equal to theta 3 is indeed a solution is the trivial solution. But now observe if we take x 1 equal to 1, x 2 equal to 1 and x 3 equal to 1 that we get the vector x equal to 1, 1, 1 which is also a solution of the system which is also a solution of the homogeneous system. This is not the 0 solution which we always get, this is a non 0 solution, this is non 0 solution of the homogeneous system. So, here is an example of a homogeneous system which has not only the trivial solution, but also has non 0 solutions. The non 0 solutions are called non trivial solutions. So, a homogeneous system in general can have trivial solutions only or it may have trivial as well as non-trivial solutions. So, homogeneous systems may have only trivial solution or may have non-trivial solution. the fact whether it has only trivial solutions or whether it has non trivial solutions uh, is going to have an impact on the solution of the hom non homogeneous system which we shall see shortly. Now, suppose the homogeneous system A x equal to theta m has a non trivial solution. say x h and since it is non trivial we will call it not equal to theta n. So, suppose I have a matrix A such that the homogeneous system corresponding to this matrix has a non trivial solution. In that case for any alpha in f remember f is either real numbers or complex numbers. If A is real matrix and you are dealing with everything real then f is real, if A is a complex matrix and we are dealing with everything complex then f is complex. So, you take any alpha which is a real number in the case of reals and complex numbers in this case of complex f. For any alpha if we set u equal to alpha x h then a of u is equal to a of alpha x h since alpha is a number we can pull it out it is alpha a x h, but since x h is a solution of the homogeneous system a x h must be theta m. So, that is alpha theta m and alpha theta m is theta m. So, that says u equal to alpha x h is a solution of the homogeneous system for every alpha belonging to f. So, the moment the homogeneous system has a non trivial solution x h, we have now alpha x h 
as alpha varies over rap gives different solutions for the homogeneous system. This implies since x h is not theta m there are infinite number of solutions for the homogeneous system obtained by varying alpha over f. So, thus we see that the moment one non trivial solution exists for the homogeneous system, there exists an infinite number of solutions. So, what is the conclusion we can draw from this? The conclusion that we can draw from this is the homogeneous system A x equal to theta m either has only trivial solution or has infinite number of solutions. Obviously, infinite of them must be non trivial because the only trivial solution is 0. So, therefore, the homogeneous system swings from one end to the other end. It can have only the trivial solution namely the 0 vector or it can have an infinite number of solutions. Uh, which one of this is true for the matrix A is going to have an impact on the nature of the solutions of the non-homogeneous system A x equal to B. Now, having found that the homogeneous system has this varying property of either only trivial solution or infinite number of solutions, we shall see what it has got to do with the non homogeneous system that we are trying to solve. So, let us now look at non homogeneous systems. As I pointed out from now on we will simply write it as NHS. So, we are given a matrix A. So, it belongs to F M N and we are given B in F M and we are looking at the system A x equal to B. Now, supposing we assume that the system is consistent. What do we mean by the system is consistent? That means, the system has a solution. That means, the B satisfies the criterion required for the system to have a solution. So, we say suppose the system has a solution. Whenever such a thing we say the system is consistent. So, when we say the system is consistent we mean that there is a solution for the system. So, suppose we have a non homogeneous system corresponding to the matrix A and suppose the system is consistent that is it has a solution. The question is how many solutions? Will there be one or many more or two or three or how many solutions will there be? Now, let us investigate this question. Suppose the non homogeneous system has two different solutions. That is solution to NHS is not unique. Suppose the system has more than one solution, the solution to the system is not unique. Therefore, there exists u and v such that u is a solution and b v is also a solution and u and v are different. So, suppose we could find two solutions that is what is meant by saying that the solution is not unique. Then since a u is b 
and a v is b we get a u minus v equal to a u minus a v, but since a u is b and a v is also b we get this is equal to theta m. Now, that says if we set w equal to u minus v satisfies a w equal to theta m, which means w is a solution of the homogeneous system. Further, since u is not equal to v, we assume u is not equal to v, since u is not equal to v, w is different from and w is not equal to theta m. And hence, w is a non-trivial solution for w is a non-trivial solution for the homogeneous system. So, the conclusion is if we assume that the solution of the non-homogeneous system is not unique, then it automatically implies that the solution to the homogeneous system must contain non-trivial solutions. So, let us write conclusion 1, we will make one more conclusion little later. Solution to non-homogeneous system not unique implies homogeneous system has non-trivial solutions. So, whenever the solution to the non-homogeneous system is not unique, the homogeneous system will automatically have non-trivial solutions. Let us look at the converse. What do we mean? Again, we start with consistent system A x equal to B and suppose homogeneous system has non-trivial solution. suppose. We shall show that the converse is true that means, the solution now we are assuming that the homogeneous system non trivial therefore, we will now show that the non homogeneous system is not unique the solutions are not unique. So, we will show that to show that non homogeneous system solution is not unique. For this, we must show that there are two solutions at least for the non-homogeneous system. We are already assuming that the system is consistent. Okay. So, how do we show this? The proof of that, since the system A x equal to B is consistent there exists a solution u such that a u equal to b. So, there is exists a solution for the non-homogeneous system that is our basic assumption because we are assuming that the system is consistent. Now, we are further assuming that the homogeneous system has non-trivial solutions. So, let x h not equal to theta n be a non trivial solution for the homogeneous system. We would now like to produce at least two solutions for the non homogeneous system. We already have one namely u, we are now going to produce another solution let v be equal to u plus x h. Clearly, a v is a u 
plus a x h a u is b by equation 1 and a x h is theta m because x h is a solution of the homogeneous system and therefore, a v equal to b. What does it mean to say? It means to say that v is a solution of the non homogeneous system. Further, v minus u is equal to x h because v is u plus x h therefore, v minus u must be x h, but x h is assumed to be non trivial solution. So, x h is not equal to theta n that says v is not equal to u. So, v is a solution of the homogeneous system and it is different from the solution u and therefore, u and v are two different solutions of the non homogeneous system. So, thus what is the conclusion? The conclusion is this is the second conclusion when the homogeneous system has non trivial solutions that implies non homogeneous system the solution is not unique. So, combining these two conclusions in the first uh, conclusion we showed the reverse of this the non homogeneous not unique implies homogeneous has non, non trivial solutions. Now, we have shown that homogeneous is non trivial implies non homogeneous is non unique. So, combining the two conclusions we get the important result that the following that A B an M by N matrix B belongs to F M A X equal to B consistent. So, I have a consistent system of M equations in unknown, N unknowns then what we have concluded in these two statements above are the following that the non homogeneous system solution is non unique if and only if the homogeneous system has non trivial solution. <coughs> in other words or equivalently we can say that the non homogeneous system has unique solution if and only if the homogeneous system has only trivial solution. Thus, we see that the homogeneous system plays an important role in deciding whether the non homogeneous system whenever it is consistent has a unique solution or not. So, the homogeneous system plays a decisive role decisive role in determining uniqueness of the solution of non homogeneous system and therefore, it becomes necessary that we analyze the homogeneous system corresponding to a given matrix very carefully because this is going to have a very important bearing on the solution of the non homogeneous system. Let us now look at the non homogeneous system. A x equal to B again assume consistent. So, now we have a consistent 
non homogeneous system that means A is an m by n matrix B is an m by 1 vector the m by n system A x equal to B is known to be consistent that is known to be having a solution. Now, suppose we know one solution suppose we know one solution of the non homogeneous system say x p we know one solution of the non homogeneous system which we denote by x p what does that mean this means a x p is equal to b the x p is a solution of the system a x equal to b. So, a x p must be equal to b that is the first conclusion assumption we make. We know that the system has a solution suppose by hook or crook or by inspection we have found one solution namely x p. Now, we would like to look at various possible solutions that may exist. So, suppose u is any other solution for the non homogeneous system that is it is a solution of the non homogeneous system and u is not equal to x p. Suppose you look at any other solution of the non homogeneous system. So, it must be satisfying a u equal to b and it is different from x p. Now, let us look at v equal to u minus x p. We have a v is equal to a u minus x p which is equal to a u minus a x p a u is b because u is a solution a x p is b because x p is a solution. So, that is equal to theta m. So, that says v is a solution of the homogeneous system because a v is theta m that says u is equal to x p plus a solution of the homogeneous system because v is u is x p plus v, but v is a solution of the homogeneous system therefore, u is equal to x p plus v. So, what have we proved? We said that suppose we know one solution x p suppose we know one solution x p of the system then any other solution of the system must be of the form x p plus a solution of the homogeneous system. So, conclusion 1 x p a solution of the non homogeneous system implies any other solution of the non homogeneous system must be of the form x p plus a solution of the homogeneous system. Conversely, consider any u which is of the form u equal to x p plus x h, where x h is a solution of homogeneous system. Then that implies a u equal to x a x p plus a x h 
but a x p is b because x p is a solution to be the non homogeneous system a x h is theta m because x h is a solution of the homogeneous system and that is equal to p that says u is a solution of the non homogeneous system. Now, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that x p a solution of non homogeneous system and x h a solution of homogeneous system implies u equal to x p plus x h must be a solution of non homogeneous system this conclusion 2. Comparing these two con conclusions together we get the result that a x equal to b consistent x p a solution of the non homogeneous system implies every solution is obtained every solution of the non homogeneous system is obtained in the form x p plus x h by varying x h over all solutions of homogeneous system. Thus, we see that finding the solution of a non homogeneous system involves two parts that of finding x p one solution of the non homogeneous system that is why we use the symbol p because it is called a particular solution a particular solution of the non homogeneous system. And we have to vary x h over all possible solution of the homogeneous system. So, we need all the solutions of the homogeneous system. So, finding solution of non homogeneous system involves two parts. The first part is finding all solutions of the homogeneous system and the second part involves finding a solution for the homogeneous system. Once we find these two we can now generate all solutions of the then can let us call this one solution as x p then can generate all solutions of the non homogeneous system by adding to x p the various solutions of the homogeneous system. So, there are two parts involved in the study of non homogeneous system. Again I repeat finding all solutions of the homogeneous system and number 2 finding a particular solution of the non homogeneous system. So, we shall now look at the first major part namely finding all solutions of the homogeneous. So, first we develop strategy for finding all solutions of the homogeneous system. So, the next major topic of our discussion will be homogeneous systems.
So, we are given A again in F m n we look at the homogeneous system A x equal to theta m problem find all solutions. Recall that we have said that this may have only trivial solution or it may have infinite number of solutions. So, therefore, we may have to find an infinite number of solutions for this in case A x equal to theta m has an infinite number of solutions. So, it may be a huge problem finding all the solution. So, we are now going to develop a strategy for this finding all solutions of the homogeneous system. The main tool in handling homogeneous system or what are known as elementary row operations. For short we will write ERO's. What are these ERO's? The ERO's are some operations the O stands for operations and where are, where are they performed? The R stands for the rows performed on the rows of a matrix and they are called elementary because they are really elementary operations. They do not involve very highly complicated. There are three types of elementary row operations that we will be using. We will call them as ERO of type 1, ERO of type 2 and ERO of type These are the three types of there are going to be three types of elementary row operations which we will be using and uh, we will give them the names as ERO of type 1, ERO of type 2 and ERO of type 3. So, let us look at first briefly describe what they are and we will look at their implications later. ERO of type 1 this simply changes the position of two rows by interchanging. In other words, we can write the first row, the third row and the third row, the first row. So, this is called row interchange. We will describe them in detail shortly. Row interchange, then the second type. This is we what do you mean by well, let us let me repeat again when I say row interchange suppose I have a matrix with 10 rows I may pick the second row and put it in the fourth place that is that second row becomes the fourth row and I will take the fourth row and go and put it back in the second row. So, the second and the fourth rows exchange position. So, they are also called row exchanges two rows exchange their positions. In the ERO of type 2 again the operation is done only in one row now. In the previous ERO of type 1 all rows remained unaltered two rows decided to exchange their position. Now, in the ERO of type 2 all rows remain unaltered except one row where we are going to make a change. What are we going to do? We take a row 
and somewhere along the line we pick up another row and take a multiple of that row and add it to this row. So, to the ith row add a multiple of some other row say the jth row. So, here all the rows remain the same except the jth row where every entry is tampered with. How is it tampered with? To its value some multiple of the corresponding value in the ith row is added. So, that is called the elementary row operation of type 2. The elementary row operation of type 3 is the following. Here again all the rows remain unaltered only one row we are going to make a change. What kind of a change we are going to make? We are scale the entries of the matrix. So, what do we do? The entries of the ith row are all multiplied by a non zero alpha in f. We will see why we want a non zero alpha in f because if you multiply by zero the entire row will become zero and all the information content of the row will be lost. We will see very precisely why we want to multiply by a non zero constant. So, we have these three types of elementary row operations which we shall describe in detail shortly. Why do we want this? What are the reasons for this? The idea what is the idea? Use elementary row operations on the given matrix A repeatedly take a matrix A go on applying all kinds of uh, apply A R of 1, A R of 2, A R of 3 and keep on varying the rows, varying the non-zero numbers, varying what multiples you are going to add and so on and so forth. Keep on performing these elementary row operations and keep on getting newer and newer matrices repeatedly to get a new matrix B we first make the idea and then we will work out the details. So, use the ERO's on the given matrix A repeatedly to get a new matrix B. What is the big deal? Now, you look at A x equal to theta m the homogeneous system corresponding to A and B x equal to theta m the homogeneous system corresponding to B. We shall see that whenever something is a solution of the homogeneous system corresponding to A, it is also a solution corresponding to the homogeneous system B and vice versa. So, what we mean is it turns out that the homogeneous system for A has the same set of solutions as the homogeneous system for B. What does it mean? It means in therefore, instead of solving 
the homogeneous system A x equal to theta m, we can solve the homogeneous system B x equal to theta m. What is the advantage? After all, instead of solving one homogeneous system A x equal to theta m, we have now reduced only solving it to another problem B x equal to theta m. Is there any advantage by solving this system B x equal to theta m? Now, it turns out if we are clever, if we are clever, then we can choose our ROs such that the matrix B is simple enough to make solving the system B x equal to theta m easy. That is the advantage. If we are clever, then we can choose our ROs such that the matrix B is simple enough to make the solution of the system easy. So, instead of solving a general system A x equal to theta m, we will be solving an easier system which is B x equal to theta m. For this to be achieved, we must 1 know what simple systems B can be to how can we use ERVOs effectively to reduce a given A to a simple B. We shall look at ERVOs and these simple questions of reduction in the next lecture.